In a very surprising move, Apple has decided to release yet another beta of iOS 26. Usually we get eight betas, then a week of a pause and then the RC version. But this week Apple has released another beta, which is beta nine, that of course brings improvements and a few fixes and changes to iOS 26. Now in this video, we're gonna talk all about this update. We have a ton of details to talk about, but before I get into all that, I just wanna ask you guys for a really quick favor. Most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy the videos and you want to see more iOS 26 videos, which we have a ton coming this month, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps out a lot. Now, first of all, just to take a look at this, if you see at the beta charts here at the beta history, actually we haven't had a beta nine for seven years. So if we take a look at this right here, you can see beta nine is with red and you can see right here, we didn't have a beta nine for a really, really long time. So in the past seven years, beta eight was the last one. This year we have beta nine. And even though it doesn't bring a ton of new features and changes to iOS 26, you can see right here, the size of the update is actually quite big. iOS 26 beta nine will come to a device at around nine gigabytes, of course, always different on different devices and different based on which software you're currently running on your device while trying to update. Now for the third time in the row, we have a build number ending with an A. So this time we have 23A5336A. Now the thing that has changed here on the build number is the last digit right there. So it was 30A, now it's 36A. So again, the third beta ending with a build number in A, which of course indicates that it should be the last beta, but you never know. Now, Apple has also released the beta for public testers. We of course have iOS 26 public beta six that was released alongside the dev beta nine. So what's new with this update? Well, don't expect new features. There are a lot of improvements, especially on the lock screen, the lock screen and the unlocking process seems way faster. This has been reported by a ton of users and it looks like Apple has improved the speed there, especially when unlocking using face ID, you will go from your lock screen to your home screen way faster there. Now, of course, the animations are again amazing here with this update, just like they have been with the last few betas, a very smooth, a very, very fast. And also the liquid glass design is basically the same so don't expect to see it and as far as i have been able to tell by using this software for a few hours now on my device there are actually no changes to the liquid glass design everything pretty much seems to be the same and we have this really cool effect right here you can see how cool that looks so basically apple looks like it's set on the amount of the liquid glass effect that they're actually putting on the menus right here. I'm satisfied with this. It looks really awesome, even though we know that on the few betas before they had actually removed quite a lot of the liquid glass effect, but now it's back and it looks much, much better. So of course, just expect to see the same liquid glass effect that you saw on beta seven and beta eight on this beta as well. Now, one thing I'm really glad they did is that they have actually fixed the volume slider on the control center. Now in beta eight, I had this problem where I would change the volume with the slider here, but it wouldn't affect the volume at all. I had to use the buttons instead of the slider on the control center. Now that has been fixed. And of course, alongside that, there will be a ton of other bugs and also different problems that Apple has fixed with this update, even though it's ready for release and it's actually very good. It's not perfect. There will be bugs and things that have to be fixed, but of course you will have time for that. We have the RC and then the final release. So we have another two weeks before Apple has to release this to the public and it should be much better than this. Now, one thing that I don't think has been really good this past week using beta eight, we cannot still talk about beta nine here. We have to give it a few days, but the battery actually seems to be a bit worse on beta eight when I compare it to the users that I got 
on beta 7. So you can see right here, five and a half hours with 131% battery. That's actually not that good, even though I've been using Stellar most of the day. Yesterday, that's why it's showing that. Of course, it will use a lot more battery. But again, the same pattern here, you can see not really good battery lives with the beta 8. Let's wait and see if it will improve with beta 9. We'll have again to give it a couple of days to see how it will, it will perform. But as you can see right here, the past few days actually my usage has dropped for maybe about an hour or an hour and a half when it comes to 100 battery i'm not getting the battery life that i was getting on beta 7 so let me know what you think and how you your experience has been with this beta actually with beta 8 whether you're getting better battery life the same or worse than beta 7. Now, one section where iOS 26 is not just falling behind is the performance. The performance is actually great and it shows on the results that we get with Geekbench 6. You can see right here, this is a score that I got with Beta 9, just like a couple of hours after I had installed it on my device. When compared to Beta 8, you can see it's very similar, 2,971 right there on the single core score, 2,989 and 86 right there on the single core score with beta 8 even though it has dropped a bit it's again just the first few hours of installing this software on the device most likely we will get way better results in the next few days and also the multi-core score has also dropped a bit but not a lot we have a drop here about 70 points again this should improve in the next few days so 7660 right there with the multi-core score while it was 7731 again even though it has dropped a bit it is still amazing these betas of ios 26 have actually performed great so what's next well of course we're getting the rc and we know that september the 9th will be the day that apple will reveal the new iphones and that day we should get the rc version of iOS 26 released to the devs and most likely to the public testers as well. And then the 15th of September will be the date that we will get iOS 26 released to the public. So what will happen in the meantime and what you should do? Well, there are a few different scenarios here. So if you're currently on beta 9, you can update of course to the RC version next week, meaning that you will have the final update on your device. So once iOS 26 RC is released, you simply head on to the general settings, software update, you can update from here and you're good to go. So you will have the final version. Once iOS 26 gets released to the public, you won't get an update unless Apple does like a re-release of the RC, then you will get another update. Now, if you install the RC, that means that you're out of the beta, you're basically good to go. And of course, in the next few weeks after the initial release of the public of the iOS 26, we should get new betas for 26.1. So if you don't wanna continue with the beta stages of iOS 26, you just wanna install the final release and wait then for the other public releases and not use the betas then make sure you go ahead and go to the beta softwares right here and turn them off now if you're currently on beta 9 but you don't want to install the rc you just want to jump straight to the public release even though again they are the same update you don't need to do that but if you just want to do that right now after you have updated your device to ios 26 beta 9 make sure that you go to the beta updates right here and turn them off right there before the RC gets released. That way you won't get the RC release, but of course you will get the public release on your device. But again, it's pretty much the same, so there is no need for you to actually go ahead and wait for the public release instead of the installing the RC version. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash that like button if you did, and of course, subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one.